Hi, and welcome back to another lesson of the TI-84 plus CE student course. In this lesson, we're looking at analyzing a one variable data set, and this uh, falls under our data and statistics section of our course. So in particular, in this lesson, we're going to look at performing some individual calculations on a list um, and looking at some more list operations that, than we did in the previous lesson. Um, and then we're going to compare those same operations with just using the one variable statistics to get a complete statistical overview um, of a set of data. Alrighty, uh, so here we've got our example. So we're just going to look at seven data points. They're the maximum temperatures recorded in a week in January in Melbourne. Um, we're going to use those data set data points to find the standard deviation of this set of data. Um, and then we're going to compare it to um, just using the standard deviation kind of operation on the calculator. Um, I've picked to do standard deviation here because I think it's something that at school, um, a lot of the times you learn how to do it on the calculator, but you don't necessarily learn what the calculation actually means um, and, how to, and how to actually do it. So I thought it might be a nice thing to kind of talk through here because it is something that will come up a lot uh, in senior school, um, wherever you are in the country. Alrighty, so I'm just going to bring up my calculator. And the first thing we're going to do is enter those data points. So same as we were talking about in our previous lesson, um, we're going to go into the statistics menu and we're going to put those seven data points into a list. So we're going to press stat uh, and enter on edit. Um, and in our list one, we're going to enter those data points. So our first one was 29. Uh, then we had 23, 26, 24. 32, 35, and 19. So there's our seven days all together. I've just brought us back to the example for a second because now we've entered the data points, I want to look at the calculation that we're actually going to be doing. So with our standard deviation, in case you have this, this uh, formula there doesn't make a huge amount of sense, I've also written out what each of those symbols means in words because um, I think that makes it a bit clearer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each value on that list we're going to minus the mean of those seven points of data from that particular value. Um, then we're going to square each of those values. So we're going to end up with seven points of um, seven data points altogether, which is the value minus the mean squared for each of those. Um, then we're going to add all of those together. And then we're going to divide it um, by the number of data points minus one. So if we've got seven data points altogether, we're going to divide it by six. Um, and then we're going to take the square root of that as well, and that's going to give us our standard deviation. All right, so how are we going to do that? Well, I'll show you. Okay, so this is going to look quite a lot like what we did yesterday. So like I said, we're going to take each of these numbers. Um, so we're going to take all of, so we've got at the top of our list two highlighted here, which means that we can enter in a formula. So we're going to take all of the values in list one. So again, second one to bring up list one. And then we're going to minus the mean. And I'm going to find the mean calculation by going second stat um, and then across to maths. And then number three is the mean. If, I, if you remember, we did that in the last lesson as well. So down to, down to the mean. And then we're going to minus the mean of list one from each of those values. So I'm going to press enter. There we go, and there they are. And then the next thing that we had to do after that was to square all those values as well. So in my list three, um, again, I've got the top of the cell highlighted so I can input a formula. Um, I'm going to take each of the values in list two and square them and press enter. All right, so there's all of my values in my list three of those squared numbers. Now, the next thing we had to do is add all of those together. Now, I'm going to do this back in my main screen. So second and mode to quit using that quit. Um, second function on top of the mode. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into those list operations again. So second stat to get my list up um, across to the maths part again. Um, and this time I'm instead of using the mean, I'm going to use the sum, which is number five. So that's going to add together um, all of those values, those squared values we had in the list three. So again, I'm going to add those together. Um, then the next thing I had to do was I was going to divide those by 6. Remember, it was like that n minus 1, so the number of data points minus 1. So 7 minus 1 gives us 6. And I can even divide it by 7 minus 1 if I wanted to instead of dividing it just straight by 6. 
okay and there we go there's our answer there and then the very very last thing I had to do was take the square root so second and the squared gives me my square root and I'm taking the square root of that answer there okay so 5.52 now the last thing I wanted to do was then just to compare that um, by uh, to just compare it with the if I did the standard deviation calculation just using the standard deviation function from those list operations so again I'm going to go second stat to bring up my list operations again across to the maths one there and number seven is my standard deviation so I press number seven um, and I want to find the standard deviation now I want to use my original data set so that was in my list one so I'm going to go second one to bring up my list one and there I can see my standard deviation and it's exactly the same so that by hand calculation that we did there um, gives me just as good of an answer as using the standard deviation uh, function on the calculator so that's just to show you a bit of some of the different things some of the different operations that you have within those list functions um, and if we go through I'll just give you a quick show as well there's some other ones as well so we have things here like you can find the median you've got minimum maximum uh, you've got your um, sum and your product um, if we go back to these kind of operations again there's a whole lot of different things that we can do in here so we've got like a cumulative sum of a list um, in these operations but these ones here are more to do with the lists and the maths part is more to do with um, the different calculations that you would do with those lists if that makes sense um, lastly what I wanted to, what I wanted, to, wanted to do was just then show the uh, one variable calculations um, to get your kind of full statistical overview of a set of data um, so to get to that instead of using list we now use the stat button um, and we go across to this calculation section here and the very first thing there says one variable statistics so I'm going to press enter on that one um, and there's no frequency list we don't have a frequency for each of those we're just looking at seven data points um, all together so I just want my list one there um, and I'm going to calculate this statistical uh, summary here so we can see here the very first thing there your x bar is your mean um, you've got your standard deviation which is s of x there that's the same as that uh, value that we got earlier um, your sum of x is 188 there's that one there um, and if we scroll down we can see we've got our five number summary too so you've got your minimum q1 median q3 and your maximum as well um, <clears throat> so that's our one variable statistics now say for example our um, our example had a frequency list involved as well so now for example we've we're looking at temperatures across January um, and these are again the maximum temperatures and I know we'd probably expect to have a lot more variation than this um, but uh, to save time in entering the data we're just going to use those same temperatures again so for example here now instead of having um, the temperature of 29 occurring on one day we have that occurring on five days 23 on four days 26 on 11 days etc etc um, it's still one variable statistic um, because if you were going to list it out it would be 29 five times followed by 23 four times followed by 26 11 times um, etc etc um, but we consolidate it so we say how many times does each one of those things occur all right so what I'm going to do I'm just going to enter those uh, new values into a list too and then I will um, continue on from there okay so there's that frequency list ed entered into my list two um, exactly the same way we we would do the list one and from there we're going to do the the one variable statistic calculations but now we're having a frequency list too so I'm going to go back into stat across to calc uh, back into those one variable statistics again so number one enter um, and now I've got a frequency list in list two that's already there um, but if you if it's yours isn't there you can put it in just by going second and then a number two to get list two um, and then I'm going to calculate those again and there we go we can see um, there's our um, one variable statistics and they are slightly different to the ones that we had before um, we didn't have that frequency list. Alrighty, well that's it from me for today and I'll see you guys next time.